Friends, our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Listen now for a word from God. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you pray with me? O Lord, uphold me, that I may uplift thee. Amen. So the end of this passage really cracks me up. Jesus spends all this time asking them if they have finally understand, understood and giving Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven and proclaiming that the church will spring forth from Peter and then says, but don't tell anybody. How is a church supposed to be built if no one knows? A church that is supposed to worship Jesus, this same guy, as the Messiah, and yet no one is allowed to know about it or him. It's a really good question, right? And I don't know. But let's be honest about this whole thing. For them, most likely, and sometimes for us, it's all a little bit unbelievable. And I think that that's kind of why Jesus says, don't tell anybody. Because Jesus knows that it's kind of unbelievable. He knows that he is not the person that everyone was expecting when they were waiting for the Messiah. They had hoped for a warrior king who would vanquish their enemies with military force and build them an economic wonderland where everyone was wealthy and loaded with excess. But that's not Jesus. His mission is the opposite of what they expected of their Messiah. And I find that really funny. Not like haha funny, but enough so that it's so interesting there's decades and centuries and millennia of scriptures telling them that God is on the side of the oppressed and the marginalized, the poor and the hungry. And there's a whole series of sermons that I heard just recently on this prophet Amos, who is one of the most fiery prophets. God sent Amos and so many other prophets to tell Israel, do better. You've lost the thread. You've lost the message. They've lost sight over and over again. So it's not surprising that they expect a warrior king, right? They have lost sight. Not unusual for these people who have just been trying to live their most faithful lives. And so, because Jesus is not who they expected, he tells them, you have to stay quiet about this, because he still has work to do. If they go and tell everyone they know, it's going to be really suspect, it's going to be upsetting, and Jesus knows that they will kill him. Which, of course, they do eventually. But until then, he works hard to keep it under wraps, to keep his identity under wraps, so that he can get some stuff done. He's got work to do. 
So a few years ago, my husband Matthew was examined for membership in the Presbytery of East Tennessee, and they sent him a list of questions ahead of time. And one of those questions was, of all of the images in scripture used to describe Jesus, which one resonates with you the most? Matthew, without hesitating, said, teacher. And that's significant for Matthew because much of his ministry is teaching. So I think that this is an important way to look at Jesus as teacher because what if he had been really loud, really obnoxious about who he was and why he was here? They would have healed him way sooner and he knew that. And the entire message, all of his teaching would be lost. Friends, when Herod heard there was a baby who would grow up to be the king, he had all the babies killed. It's not like they were going to wait around and see if he tried to overthrow the Roman Empire or not. We know, based on the history, that he would have been considered a threat, and they would have eliminated him. So it then follows that Jesus has a lot of teaching to do, and doesn't want the message to get lost in his divinity too soon. He's laying the groundwork, if you will, and that's why it's so important for us to pay attention to Jesus as a human. It's so easy to think of him only as Messiah, Christ, divine, and stick with that only. And while that is important, equally important is the work he came to do here. So we have to pay attention to all the things he said and did. We have to listen to his parables determine what he's trying to teach us. We have to watch his actions and determine what he's trying to teach us. We have to follow where he goes and determine what he's trying to teach us. Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, is our greatest teacher, and he only had three years to give us a lifetime of lessons. And he did it all in secret so that he could do it for as long as possible. Eventually, he could no longer maintain the secret. He died and was resurrected, and in the very end, he told his disciples to go into the world and be a witness to all the nations. Teach the world what I have taught you. Go into the world and love the people. Do justice. Act righteously and walk humbly with your God. So our job is to take that secret, proclaim it loudly, boldly, without fear or hesitation, that God is good, that God loves us, and that Jesus came to teach us all the things. May it be so. Amen. Friends, we rise in body or in spirit as we say together what we believe, using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which are printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing. I'm going to switch things up and move straight to the hymn, which is number 310 in your hymnal, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord.
as we move into our time of prayer together, I would draw your attention to the back of the bulletin where there is a not short prayer list and would ask if there are other prayers that need to be lifted this morning and added to this prayer list. I have two. Two. Uh, I would pray that the Holy Spirit be active in the hearts and souls of our leaders in Washington, D.C. Indeed. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, you created all of us. You created this whole world and you called it good. And so we give thanks this day for all of your creation, for the people that we love, both near and far, for the places that are home or for the places that are brand new to us. We give you thanks for the many ways that we see your work continually in this world, for all of the people who we see doing your work. We give you thanks that you call us out into the world to join in that work together, to be your hands and feet, to take care of one another, to do justice and love righteousness and walk humbly with you. We pray today, O oh God, for all of the people and places in this world that desperately need your tender care. Especially, oh God, for the ones that are near and dear to us, the ones that we lift up to you, both silently and with our voices. Holy God, you are the one who calls us continually to pray. To pray without ceasing, to spend our lives in prayer to you. And so, oh God, as we go from this place, help us to remember to do all of that praying for one another, for ourselves, and for you. There are so many places in this world, oh God, that need your tender care. For all of our leaders in Washington, as they discern, let your spirit guide them. We give you thanks that there are people to lead us, and we pray that you will be among them. We pray the same, O oh God, for all of the leaders in this nation, for governors and mayors, for senators and congresspeople, that you will be in and through their work and their decisions. We pray for love, O oh God, more often than not, we see the lack of love that exists in our world, but more grievously in your world. And so for our friends and beloved in Israel, for all of those who suffer under the hand of oppression, for all of your people who are hurting this day and the next. We pray that you will be there, that there will be solutions that are to your glory. All that we hope and pray for in this world is that we will work for your glory, that we will listen to the prophets who are telling us that we need to turn and do things anew. Help us, O oh God, to hear them. So, O oh God, we bring all of this to you this day, and we pray the prayer that your Son taught us by the power of your Holy Spirit, saying together, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this point, we will collect the tithes and offerings that you bring so faithfully to this place. Friends, I encourage you to give generously and joyfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. Will you ushers please come forward?
It is not obnoxious or annoying. It is the good news that Jesus Christ came to teach all of us. And so as you go, go knowing that the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ do go with you always. Amen.